Hello ladies and gentlemen, Paul Chopper here, and today we're doing another in-depth guide. So who are we looking at today? Well this hero is your full on support that can support in every possible way. You could even say he is the tempo of team fights. Yeah, bad pun I know, but to anyway today's hero is Narbash. Narbash is a melee order and growth all round support. He can frontline well, assisting the team in so many ways. He scales like a tank, so you want to build him as a pure frontliner. So what do you think of Narbas? Let me know in the comments down below. Well let's jump into his abilities before we get into the meat of the video. First up is Funk. Funk is where Narbas uses one of his mace drumsticks and throws it at an opponent, stunning them for a set duration of time. The stun time is lower compared to say Decker's stun and doesn't bounce like Decker's so it doesn't travel as many units but has a very quick snappy animation which can hit an opponent very quickly and at level 4 does some decent damage. With any stun in the game it can be used to trap high priority targets like carries for your team to shred them to bits or to stun the enemy heroes out of their ultimate like with Gideon's black hole. His next ability is March. This grants Narbas and close by allies including minions a speed boost for 3 seconds. Only the allies within the initial speed boost get the boost. It covers a decent radius and the movement speed even at level 1 is rather noticeable. It's very good ability to help you and your teammates escape or catch a fleeing opponent up. But be worried, especially in the early levels it has a very long cooldown but the mana cost seems fair. His final ability is more of an active passive, being son of the people. If activated, it grants an all world within again a decent radius that grants healing to both Narbash and ally heroes. It adds regen each second but also costs mana per each second it's active. The mana cost is very high and this ability really is only used after retreating to heal your team up or right into a fight as it just may be the difference between life and death. Then we have his ultimate crash ban boom. Narbas plays the drums in yet again a large radius slowing all enemies and dealing damage over the 3 second duration. Any enemy left after the 3 second duration will be hit with a final beat knocking them straight up into the air. It costs a lot of mana and has a long cooldown but surprisingly does a good amount of damage, I mean 500 level 3 is pretty good. Of course you can get stunned out of this ultimate but that I think itself is a huge benefit. Make them use that stunt on your ult rather than say Gideon on your team now that he can use his ultimate without any problems or vice versa. So let's get into how to play him. Well as any support early game you want to be there to support your carry. Your stun is great for attacking the offlaner and your speed boost is to make a good quick escape. On the people is decent just it uses a lot of mana early game so a card like circle of the healing could be good to help with the health regen for your teammates and add mana to it too to help you with that. It's more than fine to sacrifice yourself so your carry lives. For the rest of the game you're going to have to roam around and be that big tanky frontliner to absorb as much damage and abilities up as possible. For upgrades I start with the thunder then speed boost. I will upgrade my funk for the extra damage and stun duration when I can. And for the speed boost and healing aura it's up to your personal preference if you would want more speed movement or healing but the speed movement especially early game until you start building mana is worth it more in my opinion. When a team fight is about to happen you need to be right there. You should always be building tank and support cards to help your team out. You aren't really a full on initiator but how you should play depends on your team. How much will they commit to the fight or not? No point trying to go in only to find your teammates not wanting to back you up. Sometimes it will be their fault, sometimes yours as you went in too far. What I like to do unless the stun is needed for a certain target like a Gideon, I try and stun a weak opponent with not much help then jump onto them using my ult. Some of their team will try to get out of the ult, others will try to shoot me and if they have one they will spam all the CC they have to stop the ult. During this very chaotic 3 seconds your team should be able to capitalise on this shooting everyone in your ultimates. If you are still alive after this use your speed boost or to help your team retreat or finish those kills. The sword combo is great for ganking as well, as many times this game me and Yin caught this Reverend off guard and I stunned him then ulted giving them no chance to escape. You have to be wary that in most cases with your high cooldowns you may only get to use one of each ability in a fight, so use it wisely, as without your abilities Narbas really is nothing. Cooldown reduction cards could help, just better how you use those card points into other cards to make use of five longer. Cards like Quince and Scales on the pure even against a heavy CC team, Thermo Bond is an awesome pick to have. They are very expensive, but with these and your armor and mana and health cards, that's all you should focus on. You truly are a full tank support here, trying to build anything out of Narbas is hurting his true frontline potential. But the big question you're probably wondering is well Decca is the best support right now which is very true so why on earth would I choose Narbas? Well I sort of went over this already but let's get into it that more detail. Yes Decca's stun and containment field is amazing. 
but what she doesn't do is she can't be a tanky frontliner like Narbas. And it seems more and more people want to pick those weaker, higher damage junglers and offlaners like Aurora, Seraph, Countless, Morrigus, Faye, you name it, even Grux or Crun, they want to focus more on that burst damage rather than being the tank. You still see those Severals and Greystones, but not enough, so Narbas can fit into that pure tank role, and in the current game, having someone who can do that is a very, very big thing and underappreciated for sure. Narbus is definitely the most supporting support out there, which is probably why I have so much fun playing him currently, helping your entire team out for the win. But that does it for my guide to Narbas. Thank you very, very much for watching. I know this guide was a bit more well over the place, but Narbas short of speaks for himself. But stick around for plenty more Paragon videos on my channel, and I'll see you next time.